still on behaviorism. We are talking about reinforcing and punishing behaviors here. Let us get a definition of our terms. But first of all, how do you teach a mouse to press a lever? How might you use behavior modification to shape human behaviors? To find a desired behavior and make something pleasant happen every time it appears. Or to find an undesired behavior and make something unpleasant happen every time it appears. That's a simplistic notion, and people generally hold these ideas when they think of behavior modification. Let us unpack this and clarify these ideas just a little bit. That's kind of right, but it's not quite right. A reinforcer defining our terms is any consequence that increases the likelihood that a behavior will occur again. So reinforcement is the process of attaching reinforcers to certain behaviors. There are two types of reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is a reward or a pleasurable thing that is attached to a behavior. Behavior. If you're a mouse, that would be a tasty mouse pellet. If you are a human being, that would be money, attention, candy, recognition, etc., etc., etc. Now, negative reinforcement, this is often confused with punishment, is the removal of an annoying or painful condition when that is attached to a behavior. For instance, if there was a mild shock, it would be rewarding to remove the mild shock. If a child had to stay inside at recess, the reward would be removing, uh, allowing the child to go outside for recess. So negative reinforcement is a behavior is reinforced when you take away something that is unpleasant. Punishment, on the other hand, is a consequence that decreases or um, suppresses behavior. Behavior is followed by punishers are less likely to be repeated. Two types of punishment. Type one punishment is presentation punishment. That is called an aversive conditioner, something annoying or present. It's when an aversive conditioner follows a behavior. If you're a mouse, this would be electric shock. If you're a human, aversive stimuli, not always intentional, by the way, would be humiliation, frustration, spanking, hurtful words. None of these are recommended, by the way, or timeouts. So type one is when you present an aversive conditioner or something bad. Type two punishment is removal punishment. Rewarding stimulus is taking away, followed by a behavior. Behavioral re results in taking something pleasant away or a reinforcing stimuli away. Mouse pressing the lever resulted in food being removed, and mouse would soon learn not to press the lever. A human child at recess is asked to go inside as a result of a negative or unwanted playground behavior. Removal punishment, a child likes to be outside, going inside would remove that pleasant thing. Caution, 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 warning Will Robertson. Punishment is very limited in modifying behavior. It should never be used as the sole means of behavior. The organism, whether it's a mouse, a human being, or a chicken, simply learns to avoid punishment. They do not learn the correct behavior. I'm not saying there should never be logical consequences for behavior, but if all you think about management and control is making something bad happen, you don't understand. Immediacy. Uh, to uh, a reinforcer, punishment or aversive, should be used immediately after a behavior to be effective. Lever press, pressing that mouse pellet needs to show up there exactly. If you're trying to reinforce hand raising in your classroom, every time you see it, you go, nice job, right after the behavior. Now, in some classrooms, they use something like, if you get so many things by Friday, you'll get to have a pizza party. Well, for a young child, a pizza party on Friday is too far removed. So you want something immediately following the behavior. You want it to go very close together. A policy of getting tough. This is a simplistic notion, whether we're talking in a classroom level or on a societal level. Simply getting tough on criminals or bad behavior is not an effective way of controlling behavior. If you think 
A management system is just a matter of getting tough you don't understand. Whether you're dealing with people, human beings, or mice, and I'm repeating this, I know, simply getting tough or make something bad happen is not effective because the organism simply learns not to, learns to avoid the bad thing. It should never be used as the sole means of behavior. There's a place for logical consequences of negative behavior. Yes, there is. But you need to consider the antecedents as well. When you're looking at behavior in your classroom, seek to understand the conditions that caused the behavior. That doesn't mean that you dismiss negative behavior, but you can better apt deal with the behavior if you understand the motivation. Too often in classrooms, we deal only with behavior, especially with EBD students. We don't deal with the emotion part. And that is the antecedent. If you are a true behaviorist, you would look to see the, uh, the antecedent, what is causing the behavior. All right, end part six.